Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me in the garage of Brian Gold PhD. We're going to be catching up with Brian and bringing down the Lexus LFA to check it out, one of my favourite cars in the world. You can see there are a few rather nice toys here though, but let's crack on. We're going to need to pull out the Porsche forwards, then we'll be able to bring the Lexus down and take a listen to the V10 that that car has and experience what it's like. Take a look then, we are joined by Brian. How's it going? What's going on guys? Good to see you Good and see you. Um, to see some of the cars. But like I said, we need to hear this and I gather it's not so standard as well. Nope, but I'll let you, I'll let your ears be the judge. Okay, so it's got a Vorsteiner, it's the Vorsteiner RT. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna hear the sound of the exhaust system on this when it fires up, it's coming on forwards. And I'll show you around some of the other cars as well. It's the Life 911 Turbo S, 991.1 Turbo S. RS, yes, with the angry, aggressive face. It's also, it's a GT Silver car with satin clear bra to give a different look. Next to that, I'm sure many of you have noticed, the R34 GTR. So we're gonna be taking a look at the LFA, and then later on, we're also gonna be checking that out in more detail too. But of course, this is a bit of storage. Next LFA up top, one of 500. Next to it, we've got the Can-Am buggy. Out of the 500, the last 50 with the Nürburgring editions. This is number 400 of the 450 LFAs. That sounds all right. Not bad. Not too shabby. Yeah, not too shabby at all. And of course, Brian was founding member of Cut Gang. Um, but we'll get this down. How does it work? How do these? I should learn about lifts. This is a good way to make more space out of your uh, out of your garage. You got a lock over here. Okay. And then. Just hit this guy. Oh, go. Give it a little lift just to release it and then it'll drop down. Okay. Just like that. We can stand back and have the elephant. Amazing, very, very efficient. So the LFA guys, it, I mean, it's one of my favorite cars for many reasons. Front engine, 4.8 liter, naturally aspirated V10. Engineered, of course, by Toyota and Lexus in Japan. Over-engineered, many would say. The exhaust system and the fine tuning of the audio also with Yamaha. It's basically, I mean, it's a, it's a kind of dream car. These, these things don't exactly get built very often in this, in this way from a company like that. Full blacked out Lexus badge at the front. You know, I always just felt it looked incredible. And this is a nice spec, the black with the brown, the saddle kind of leather inside. Well, I've got the key. I should probably give that to you. All right. <laughs> Remove before flight. Uh, in this case though, flight might commence quite shortly. Undo the trickle. Yep. Uh, so that goes inside the rear hatch. Is yeah, course... Lexus didn't give you a hardwire. They actually gave you two clamps. So I okay. had somebody hardwire it after. Right, okay, so normally it plugs straight into the battery. Yep. And then I'm going to sneak the camera down here to get a sound, uh, sound check from the exhaust as it fires into life right now. <laughs> it's such a sweet tone. I love the color of those wheels as well, the dark chrome. It's quite a kind of 90s supercar wedge shape almost, the way it goes down towards the rear like that. This car though, absolute stunner, absolute stunning thing. It's time then. So the door handles for the Lexus LFA, you press down in here, the door opens up, take a step inside. Everything about the interior of this actually kind of paved the way for newer generation Lexuses. Things like the uh, joystick controller that you have. Oh, the plaque there, that's cool. LFA number 400. That's quite nice to have a round number. Yeah, and then your airbag seat, seat Oh belts. yeah, the airbag seat belts with all the padding. Yep. There's so much about this that was just they were ahead of they were ahead of their time. Yeah, they just sure. took a little too long. And this is a 2012 car, so it's yep. seven years old now. You've got the toggle up here for the different driving modes. Digital dashboard, which is really cool as well. Start yeah, and then, on the steering wheel. And then when you go into the menu, which is... Which, it all moves around, doesn't it? Yeah, I just don't remember which button got you into the... Oh, this one, done. There we go. It slides across. That's cool. As well? The mobile <laughs> Yeah. Visiting. The noise in the background. How do you find the gearbox then? It's a six-speed automated manual. It's a little slow. Like when you're transitioning at high rates of speed, you have that, like your that whole lurch. body does that yeah. lurch thing. 
it's a little annoying, but it's not, you know, you get used to it. Yeah, I mean, it was the, this kind of era, it was done because it's a very lightweight gearbox system versus double clutches. Kind of reminds me of my E46 M3. Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah, the uh, SM. SMG, SMG yeah. Boxes, yeah. And if you didn't give it enough gas, the whole car would shake. Yeah, 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 kind of like that. So this is drive, automatic, but you have that, ah, five cylinders idling. Yeah. That, like, that cylinder of deactivation back on this, that's actually, that must have been way ahead of the time. You still don't have that on most supercars now. No. Wow. And okay. you feel the slight engine difference right now. Yeah. Your butt vibrates a little differently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got, so once we play with the paddles, yeah. It's now in manual. If you want to go back to auto, okay, you, you press on there, and then you have your different. Yeah, the sport display where it goes white. Yep, it's such a cool dashboard. Really, one of the best. The mix of analog and digital, still having the chrome surround and the screen that slides across. Yep. No lift system though. No lift. That does make life a little bit difficult. I installed skid plates. Okay. That was yeah. about the best I was going to get. Yeah, protect the bumper. I mean the. To be honest, the interior of it is really cool. Maybe the screen is gonna get outdated quite quickly, but I think that's the way with all technology these days. Yeah, but at least the seats are comfy. I can see how uh, Tradecoin put 50,000 miles yeah. on his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, that sound. Turn then back into the garage. Do you think it would be possible to get a quick blip if I jump out? Of course. I think we're going to have a listen to how this sounds from the outside. Take off my airbag seatbelt. Door handles, even those are a magnificent thing. Everything is just over engineered to the finest possible degree. So let me come round towards the back of the car then. And let's take a little listen to the sound of the LFA. <laughs> That is heaven, 
high pitched, fast revving, glorious, glorious sound. Wow. Every startup is a good one, and it's such a unique style as well. Oh, I tell you what, just quickly, before yep. reversing, can we see the wing going up and down? A little uh, demo. Oh, do you have to be belted up and everything? No, gotta find the button. Ah. And that's what the wing looks like when it's up. But as soon as you start driving, it would actually put itself down. That's literally just a parking mode. You can see how the lower edge comes up as well for the airflow. Again, all very over-engineered. That's really cool, and especially the way you see the lower part of it coming up as well. Yep, and then it snaps into place. Yeah, just engineering craziness. When you, when you ordered the LFA, it was actually one of the first cars you spec'd basically online, choosing your exterior color, interior configuration, wheel color, brake color, uh, making sure it was all uh, spec'd up. I haven't really talked too much about the details. 560 horsepower, the six-speed automated manual gearbox, and no pressure now lining it up in here to be parked underneath, alongside the angry-looking GT2 RS. So this is one of Japanese, or the Japanese's finest, the sense of the LFA, and this is another, a car that, to be honest, I'm not as versed on as I should be if the comments from you guys whenever we see one in the videos is to go by. So let's find out a little bit more about the R34 GTR. Talk to me about this car then. It's my baby in my... Your baby, yeah? Like, we all have that one car that's uh -huh. like, uh, I'd never sell. How long have you had it? 2012. So okay. I have this and the LFA right around the same time. Okay, a little bit of a Japanese streak there. Yep, I've always been a Japanese guy. I even have a 300ZX like this in silver. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair play. So, I mean, other than knowing the R34 came after the R33 and before the R35, I don't know all that much about it. Yeah, what? the R35 is cool, but I'll pop the hood for you. Uh -huh. Is this a specific spec or trim or anything? Or? This one's a V-spec. A V-spec, okay. And under here, I'm always keen to learn. Engine-wise, what are we looking at? So you're looking at a big engine. No, just screwing around. Um, so I did custom intakes. Uh -huh. I did a oil filter relocation kit. Okay. A custom intercooler, oil cooler, Nismo fuel rail or Tomei fuel rail, uh, bigger injectors, different fuel pump. Uh, okay. This has HKS uh, drag suspension. Right. So I put some time and energy into it. Do you know what power it's running? We are making right around 650 to the tire. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's not what I was expecting there. So that's, I mean, 750 or so from the Give engine. Take. Yeah. Woo. Okay then. Should we? Can we hear it start up and pull it forwards? How's this? That's a deep grumble. So this is a very, very different car. Very, very different cars. V-Spec GTR. <laughs> I've never even been in one before. I don't think I've ever even sat in an R34 or an R33 for that before in my life. That's quite comfortable. It's a bucket seat with, with good bolstering. Yeah, very comfortable. Take it out for a quick run. Let's go. Right hand drive in the US. <laughs> that is completely different. Okay, literally, this is a right-hand drive car over here in America. And also the thing people have to watch out for is the indicators. It's the same, the indicators are on the wrong side too, aren't they? Correct. They're over on the right. Do you do you just jump in and drive it and don't think about it? Or do you yeah, have to like reset your brain? No, I've gotten used to it at this point. Yeah. Shifter, you know, it's the same, shifter. same pattern. Yeah. So first is still top left. Given that this car is actually from back in 1999, the technology of it for 20 years old is insane. Look at the screen. You can see where the inspiration for the R35 came from in terms of the dials and displays. It was, I mean, it's like the LFA, isn't it? It was just ahead of its time. It was ahead of its time. It was a beast of a machine. It just never made it to the US. And even Nissan added four wheel steering. So you still have a couple degrees of steering in the rear. Which is crazy, because that's what, obviously a lot of manufacturers make such a song and dance about now. Yeah. Having rear wheel steering. They did it back in the 90s. And I don't even think that was the first time it was ever done. No, it started with the 300 CX. Okay, and I noticed the dial is in kilometers per hour as well. Yeah, I have. You just I'm, gotta work it out in your head. Yeah. It's roughly right. <laughs> it's close enough. And the wing sticking out over the back. So this is, like I said, the first time I've ever been in one of these. I guess it must be an absolute blast to drive, manual. Oh yeah. 
proper car and, and there's such a club behind them they're like association and, and fans of these cars oh if we were to like drive around town in this we'd probably get an even split of people that are like oh my god you're Ford GT yeah forget the Ford GT oh my god it's a GTR yeah 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 it's crazy seeing it especially out here but I think the fact that you couldn't get them new creates a big part of that it creates some so of the desire for them so there's only 14 legal ones in the US 14 legal there's like okay. maybe 50 now that are not legal yeah um but this is one of the 14 that What makes it, how does that work? What so there was a import company called Motor X back in the day that imported a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Really, he was just fudging the paperwork. So the state let it go on those 14. He went to jail shortly after, but everybody got to keep their car. Okay. Any one of these went for a major premium. Yeah. Um, so, wow. Yeah. But it's all legal, it's all allowed because at the time it was, the case was done and that was that. Yep. Wow, and this is one of them. Only 14. I can... Oh, the sound there. Even just a low, low RPM upshift. The sounds this makes are really cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the lift off wastegate sound. And it's turning heads too. Those guys. <laughs> and the camera phone's out a moment ago. Just what you were saying. People love this thing. People absolutely love it. If you know, you know. Yeah. It's one of those things that you appreciate, and it's one of those cars I saw growing up, and I was like, I want one. Yeah. There's got to be a way. Yeah, yeah. And now you've made it, now you've got it. Yep. Get to enjoy it, have some fun with it, modify it. Probably track it. Yeah. Have some fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Amazing. <laughs> Back in we come then. But that was a fun experience. Thank you ever so much. Not a problem. My Anytime. first time in an L34. And seeing, I guess, some of the different generations of Japanese engineering here from the uh, late 90s and also to the early 10s or 2009, I think the LFA was first revealed. Something yeah. like 2009, 2010. Cool. Well, thank you ever so much. Appreciate that a lot. No Great catching up. Great I'm going to pop your you. links down below as well, guys, if you want to go and follow Brian, see some more of the cars, see what he's up to on his Instagram page, which has a huge following, by the way. <laughs> Trying to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats. It's going very well. And thank you again for this amazing opportunity. Well, there we have it then, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. The LFA, though, really and truly is one of my absolute favorites. I think it looks stunning. You start to see more and more of the aero and details when you're up close to it. For example, how the air comes in through the front, the openings around the lower sections as well, the angry look at the headlights, the way they're positioned, but just that front engine, sporty Grand Tourer, all the power to the back, engine up towards the front, magnificent combination, glorious soundtrack, and one of the absolute best. An interesting experience as well, discovering the Skyline R34, a car, like I said, that I haven't really spent any time with before, but whenever one appears in my videos, I hear all about it from you guys. So great to have had that opportunity as well. And of course, also some other very nice toys around. So again, a big thanks to Brian. Do go and follow Instagram link down below as well. But thank you very much as always for watching. That's it for this time. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Cheers.